think about the coldest day in your life. Now multiply it by five, and imagine how the Inuit people regularly cope with temperatures such as 64 degrees. Yes, even your freezer stays like a summer day in the face of this situation. But the Inuit community has turned surviving without modern heating in these extreme conditions into an art with methods passed down from generation to generation at these temperatures. Metal becomes brittle like glass, and the skin considering that they can freeze in just 30 seconds. The answer is simple from the outside, but quite sophisticated from the inside. And hidden igloos are maybe how do you think something made of snow can keep you warm? Here's the answer. Igloos are simple from the outside, highly functional from the inside. The genius behind these shelters starts with first arranging snow blocks in a perfect spiral. Like a frozen snail shell blocks are randomly stacked, each one inside it is placed at the right angle and creates a solid structure that engineers call the catenoid curve. It is such an architectural marvel that even if someone jumps on it, collapse, and even these blocks are made of compressed snow, not ordinary snowdrifts. This type of snow contains small air pockets and acts as an excellent insulator, just like a comfortable winter coat. These air pockets trap heat in an igloo. The temperature can only go up to 15 degrees. Yes, there is no oven, there is no electric heater, there is only a human. Remember the moments when you squeeze the temperature with many people in a small elevator. This principle really works here, and the dome shape is also the secret of this job. As cold air accumulates and collapses into the entrance built at a lower level, warm air rises and collects at the top, where people sleep. The entrance tunnel is not only a dramatic touch, but also acts as a barrier separating the freezing cold outside and the temperature of the interior. And even some igloos had more than one room, almost like ice palaces. But the igloo staying warm inside is possible not only with insulation, but also with proper ventilation. It's literally a matter of life and death. That little hole at the top of the dome is there not only to get your partner snoring out, but actually for a much more vital function. Yes, this can definitely be a nice bonus, but something interesting happens when the temperature inside reaches about 15 degrees. Hot air rises. But this hot air, its main purpose is to keep the air fresh and prevent it from baking slowly in a snow oven. Inside it also carries carbon dioxide with it when it rises. Carbon dioxide accumulates quickly without proper ventilation, and this is not the kind of atmosphere you want to sleep in. The vent serves another critical purpose. Melting water forms a thin layer when hot air hits the snowy ceiling. Now you might think that's bad news. Who needs a ceiling that drips on it while sleeping? But this water seeps into the land and freezes again, creating an airtight ice sheet that further strengthens the igloo. Natural, the size of the ventilation hole requires a critical balance if it is too large. You will lose too much heat if it is too small. You will face the risk of drowning. The Inuit have created to perfect this balance for generations. And I must say that doing this wrong can lead to very expensive consequences. I once tried to build a snow castle as a child. I completely closed it. And the result was a very unsuccessful pile of snow from the shelter temperature control. Is so it is sensitive that even if you light a small seal oil lamp inside, you may need to adjust the ventilation again to prevent overheating. Yes, you heard right. Overheating in a house made of snow. But staying warm is not only about the design of the structure, but also what you wear inside is just as important. Traditional Inuit sleeping clothes are a masterwork in the art of temperature regulation. The secret is hidden in layers, but this is the kind of layers that your mother forced you to put on before going out in elementary school. Each layer serves a specific purpose and works together like a well-oiled machine. The inner layer is usually made of reindeer skin, whose fur is turned inward and removes moisture from the body at a speed that modern sportswear cannot imagine. This is very important because arctic sweating is as undesirable as a hedgehog in a balloon factory. Inuit have discovered that air is one of the best insulators that nature has to offer. Deck modern outdoor equipment tries to imitate this with millions of dollars of investment. The decoys have already solved this system, creating air gaps between the thin layers. They have built almost a personal greenhouse around their bodies, while the outer layer is a complete engineering marvel, usually made of seal skin, whose fur is turned outwards. This layer creates a windproof and waterproof barrier enough to remove stones. Modern raincoats, natural oil, and seal skin provide excellent protection against moisture. I once tried a modern jacket in a light rain, 
After all, I looked as if I had jumped into a pool. But the traditional clothes of the Inuit are almost laughing at the Arctic storms. These layers are designed to adjust the temperature, if it's too cold. Loosen the layers, if it's too hot, compress. As if there's a thermostat built into your clothes, come in sleeping patterns. The Inuit developed an excellent sleeping system centuries ago. Seal skin and reindeer fur covered sleeping bags that put modern equipment to shame seal skin is water resistant thanks to its natural oils and retains its flexibility without cracking reindeer each hair of its fur. Jesus traps air almost like microscopic thermoses with its hollow structure. This natural insulation is far beyond modern materials, and fur traps warm air. Ken has a special alignment that allows moisture to get out. Sleeping bags are finished with carefully sewn waterproof seams and fit perfectly on the body without creating air pockets. But the secret of the job is not only in the overalls, but Inuit are masters of preheating sleeping areas. Special stones heated by the fire wrapped in thick furs into sleeping areas. These stones are placed work like a natural hot water bag, releasing heat slowly during the night. Some stones can maintain heat up to 40 degrees for several hours. This technique is literally an art of life against the Arctic freezing cold. The placement of these stones is a complete art of strategy. They are usually placed under the feet in places or core body areas that will warm cold toes as they cool down, rotating as they cool down, creating a constant source of warmth campfire smoke. This system is a heating method that works with a zero carbon footprint, but the ingenious way these stones are combined with snow blocks releases their heat while a small amount of meltwater turns into an ice sheet, allowing better confinement of temperature stones almost offer a warm embrace from inside the igloo. Some communities have developed stone rotation systems to keep warm stones constantly. This is the Arctic version of sharing basic needs and is quite critical for survival. But the stones in the igloo-eat is not the only source of warmth. The human body also produces as much heat as a light bulb every minute. The Inuit know very well the importance of sharing body temperature. Families sleep tightly together in traditional sleeping arrangements, creating a natural human heater effect. Two people, two floors, three people provide three times the temperature, which is quite relaxing in the cold of 40 Dean on sleeping platforms have also been upgraded according to the principle of warm air rise. From the outside, sleeping on a snow block may seem uncomfortable, but in fact, it is allows you to sleep at the hottest point of the igloo. Sleeping next to a family of four people can increase the ambient temperature by up to 10 degrees, which creates a natural electric blanket effect. The Inuit have also developed special sleeping positions to maximize heat and minimize contact with cold surfaces. These positions, which have a layout like human Tetris, ensure that you stay warm, as well as the art of breathing. Also plays a critical role by heating the incoming air through your nose before reaching the lungs. It works like a heater in frozen air or nose can heat the air. You breathe up to 20 degrees in seconds breathing in Arctic. Air without this natural system is similar to swallowing an ice cube Inuit discovered the technique. Modern science calls respiratory heat exchange in lab coats centuries ago by taking slow and deep breaths to minimize the amount of cold air entering. Their lungs fast and shallow breaths can work on morning runs. Some Inuit make breathing strategically with fur clothes by bringing them. They create a pocket of warm and humid air that allows the next breath to be preheated. The moisture coming in their breath freezes on the fur and adds another layer of insulation, making it similar to making ice walls from ice, almost turning the difficulties given by nature to an advantage. The most impressive is that they time their breathing according to their activities. They take faster and shallower breaths when active and when resting or sleeping. They switch to deep and slow breaths. It's almost as if there was a gear lever in their respiratory system October. All these breathing techniques require energy and warmth, and the Inu diet is designed to meet this need. Their calorie-rich diet contains energy-filled foods such as whale oil. Whale oil provides more than 9 calories of energy per gram. Doubles. The energy content of protein bars, a single serving of traditional Inuit food can cover the calories needed for a day. The high fat content in their diet may be shocking to an ordinary dietitian. But these fats are Saharan, it is as vital as sunscreen in the desert. It is not only the amount that is wise, but also the timing of eating. Especially foods that take a long time to digest are stored for the night. This creates an effect as if you have a slow release heater in your stomach. Raw fish, seal meat, and dried whale skin covered with a layer of fat stand out as energy bars. 
and the Arctic Inuit develop fine-cutting techniques that make even frozen food edible, as well as the heating properties of raw food, better than cooked ones. Statistics are striking. Traditional Eno diets can contain up to 75% fat. It's like eating a stick of butter with every meal, but enriched with omega-3 fatty acids and fat. Soluble vitamins yet surviving in these conditions is not only about what you put in your body, but also what happens in your mind. Arctic survival is a test not only of physical endurance, but also of mental endurance especially. Sleeping in the shivering cold requires a mental marathon. Inwood have developed a mindset effective enough to impress any sleep therapist worry about the cold they focus, because when stress hormones are elevated, this can cause them to feel more cold not only mentally but also physically. Bedtime is at the center of calm and tranquility. Traditional bedtime stories are not only a means of entertainment, but also a teaching. These stories are usually focuses on characters who have mastered the art of sleeping in the cold and offers vital lessons through humor. For example, a popular story tells about a hunter who is so relaxed in his igloo that he completely misses the arrival of spring, although this story seems like a fun joke for children. This story instills the idea that snow shelters are comfortable, not scary. Moreover, Inuit have been practicing a technique that modern science calls thermal meditation for centuries, mental calm that reduces shivering and saves energy. It's almost like a mental thermostat that allows you to sleep even when your breath is freezing in the air. Research shows that this calm mindset can reduce the body's oxygen demand by up to 10%, which can reduce heart rate and metabolism. This means less deep breathing and more efficient use of body heat. But Arctic survival is a community business rather than individual effort. Inu communities' temperatures are bone freezing large. Families form thermal clusters by sharing an igloo, so the internal temperature can be raised up to 12 degrees with body heat alone. This is almost like a free heating system supported by your relatives. The community develops sophisticated systems. To share resources, for example, one class seal skin sleeping bags are given priority to the elderly who are cold or those who have returned from a strenuous hunt in a specific area of each family. There is a layout that he specializes in, some cut perfect snow blocks, while Others build sleeping platforms that keep the heat better. Even meteorologists who can read snow conditions and mark travel routes. This organization is so sophisticated that even strategically placed survival stations for blinding snowstorms are built in advance. These are not simple rest stops, but Arctic hotels equipped with survival equipment humor is even a part of this system. For example, the story of a man exiled to sleep who snores noisily is often told but his family accepts it back when they realize that his ability to share his body temperature is more valuable than noise. The most powerful tool of Arctic survival is not clothes or technique, but the unity of the community that does not allow anyone to fight the cold alone.